Hey everybody, got a, a battery video for you today. As you know, if you've seen any of my videos, I love batteries, I love energy storage. Batteries and energy storage are vital to the continued operation of the off-grid mountain homesteads. So without batteries, I couldn't do what I do. I couldn't keep the lights on. So I've been working with this Greener Power 200 amp hour plus battery for roughly a month now. Been charging, discharging it, running it through, some, running it through its paces. But today I want to bring you a test of the BMS. It's rating at 200 amps. I have not tested the 200 amp rating of the BMS on this battery as of yet because this little inverter will not do it. So instead of doing a bunch of crazy wiring and stuff, let me show you what's going to go on. My friends at Top Bowl have hooked me up with a 4,000 watt 12 volt inverter. Yes, this is awesome. Full video coming up on this inverter very soon, but for today, I'm going to run it on this greener power so I can get to the 200 amp rating. So this is going to be the new test inverter for big loads to test those big BMSs on the plus series batteries. So let me get everything wired up. We'll go over some specs on the greener power and then see if the BMS will hold up 200 amps. Got all everything wired up with four alt cable, which we're not going to exceed that four alt with this BMS, but went in and used four alt anyhow to get full power through. And always, I try to bring you multifaceted videos. So if you don't like sparking and arcing when you hook your battery cables to your inverter when you're charging the capacitors in them, test light, hold it till the glow goes out, and then throw your fuse in. Your capacitors are charged in your inverter. No sparking, no arcing, and no damage to your inverter. Pretty straightforward. Just using my Renergy test shunt. That's one I use to. Instead of looking at the meter, we'll look at that shunt for our amp draws, things like that. So I'll go ahead and turn the, turn the inverter on. Cooling fans. All right, cooling fans shut off. Part of the start on the inverter. Gives it a 15 second run on the fans, but I said we're going over the inverter later today, focusing on this battery right here. And we'll give you some quick specifications on this battery before I start the test on the BMS. So a greener power battery, this 200 amp hour plus, Right now, at time of filming, it's $449.99. That comes out to be $175 per kilowatt hour or 17 and a half cent per watt hour, whichever method you decide to use. It weighs 47.22 pounds, so that comes out to be 54 watt hours to the pound, or if you're using kilowatts like I do, 18 pounds per kilowatt hour. So very energy dense, very lightweight. Over 4,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge, and if you only draw down to 6% depth of discharge, you can get 15,000 cycles out of these prismatic cells that are in this unit. They project a lifespan of over 10 years from the manufacturer, and they'll give you a five-year warranty. All you got to do is fill out their little warranty form. You get five years of warranty on this battery. And the BMS in this unit, like I said, is rated at 200 amps. We're going to test that here in just a second. It also has overcharge protection over discharge protection, over current protection, short circuit protection, and high temp cutout. And the battery, of course, has a 200 amp BMS in it. That's 200 amp charge and discharge. But of course, the recommended is 0.2C, which would be 40 amps. I'll speak on that later in the video as well. Fully charged, and we got the inverters pulling 18 watts idle consumption, not bad. So first, I'm going to use this heater and see what that gets us. All right, the heater's on. It's a 1500 watt PTC heater. So, see what it does. So I got the PTC heater running, 1500 watts, uh, pulling 104, 103 amps. And we're co-witnessing pretty good off the inverter over here, the shunt right here. So 12.6 volts there. And what are we over there? 12.7. So it's handling 100 amps, no problem with the, the little heater here. So I got a resistive load, another resistive load. I know, resistive loads. We'll get some inductive loads on the next test, but... Resistive loads are easy to dial up in intensity, so I don't pop that fuse over there. So let's throw, let's throw a big load to it. Um, let it eat.
Well, that's a good way to burn 20 amp hours in a hot minute. Uh, 230 plus amps going through the inverter out of the Greener Power battery. Uh, the fuse started to get a little bit warm. It's a 250 amp fuse. So I had a small fuse, of course, for correlation to the wire. The battery recovered nicely. Held 230, 240 amps, no problem. That's rated at 200. That's 200 continuous. It can handle that little bit of overage, no problem. That's in within the realm of spec and normal, so I'm happy. And just because it can handle 200, does that mean you should slam it at 200 every day? I wouldn't recommend it. Just because it can do it doesn't mean you should. I always go with the motto, oversized and underutilized. If I was using this battery in a day-to-day -day cycling operation, solar, off-grid, stationary power, I'd probably stop it at 0.5C, maybe 100 amps or so to get the longest life out of the battery. You get more capacity when you draw it down slower. I don't like slamming them like that all the time for a test like that. That's pretty cool. And for those of you who don't quite get the 200 amps not using it fully, let me give you another reference. Say your old Ford or your old Chev, you know, makes, let's say, 200 horse. Does that mean you drive your Ford or Chev around all day at the full 200 horsepower? Well, I don't. Maybe you do, but I don't. So think of it that way. Just because your battery's got 200 horse, does that mean you need to utilize that 200 horse all the time? No, most people don't. But that horsepower is there if you need it. That's the benefit of these big BMSs on these batteries. So another test of a Greener Power product. Greener Power has yet to disappoint me. I'm thoroughly impressed with their batteries, their capacity, their charging, their discharging. Everything about the Greener Power batteries, nothing to complain about thus far. What do I mean by that? Well, I just don't let these batteries sit on the shelf after doing tests with them. They actually get used in day-to-day -day cycling. So here's another Greener Power product I've been using since 2-24-24. So I've been using it for a while. I daily cycle these. I use them. I'm off-grid. I use batteries. So I do the test, do a BMS test or low temp cutoff or whatever kind of test y'all like to see. Then I put them into service and use them daily. So I want, want to let you know I'm running long-term tests along with the short-term tests. So any problems ever arise on anything you see on this channel, I will keep you abreast of any developments with any product that you've seen. Great budget-friendly battery. Did I mention they're having a lightning sale? I don't know if I mentioned that earlier or not. They're having a lightning sale on this model right here coming up real soon. So I'll put links down in the description of the video. Be sure to check them out. See, you know, see if that's something you might need. And look for this battery and more use case scenarios of it on the channel here. So appreciate Greener Power sending the battery for testing. I've enjoyed testing it for the last few weeks. I'm going to test it some more. Uh, any kind of special test you want to see, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to oblige. So thank you all for watching the Off-Grid Mountain Homestead. Until next time, I'll bet her the grid don't go. Y'all have a good day.